In 1963, a group of black ministers gathered in Birmingham, Alabama to try and change the laws of segregation. The ministers were named James Bevel, Fred Shuttlesworth, Wyatt Walker, Abernathy, and Martin Luther King. Segregation laws said that blacks and whites needed to stay separate. Schools, parks, stores, restrooms, and even water fountains all were separate. Birmingham had some of the strictest segregation laws in the country. That's why blacks began to protest. For a month, black congregations had been gathering at churches and then marching into a whites-only public park called Kelly Ingram Park. Whenever they protested, many got arrested. Every time they were arrested, someone would have to bail them out only so that they could protest again. After a while, blacks started getting tired and feeling a little hopeless. The laws weren't changing, and preachers began having a hard time motivating people to continue to fight. One day, James Bevel had an idea. He suggested to the other preachers that they allow young people to protest. Young people had always wanted to take part in the protest, but most didn't think they should. Jail was a hard place to be, especially for a child. But everyone wanted integration so badly, and the young people were so willing that they decided to let them protest too. A big march was organized. Word traveled throughout schools and communities, and many young people were interested in helping. Ultimately, 958 children volunteered, some as young as six years old. It was Thursday, May 2nd, and they called the day D-Day. One after another, 50 young people filed out of the 16th Street Baptist Church. They were marching and singing loud. We shall overcome. Their song was excited and strong. We shall overcome someday. As they marched out into Kelly Ingram Park, one after another, they were put into paddy wagons and arrested. More and more brave children filed out until the end of the day when 600 young people were locked up. The police were surprised and overwhelmed by the number of people, and blacks were very pleased. Their goal was to keep protesting, to fill up jails, and to persist until whites were forced into changing their laws. Bo Connor was the police commissioner. He was frustrated by the young protesters, but he was also adamant about keeping a segregated way of life in Birmingham. The next day, when the protests began again, the police force was prepared. They brought out fire hoses and dogs to scare the adults and children away from the park and away from downtown where they might get to white businesses. The dogs barked and bit. The hoses were strong and sprayed hard enough to take the bark off of a tree. The hoses slammed children on the ground. Several young people were injured and many arrested. People watching were getting angry. Bystanders who were not even trained in nonviolent protests threw rocks at the men operating the hoses. The preachers were worried about more violence breaking out and they called for a truce for the day. By the time they quit for that day, nearly 2,000 people filled the jails. When the protesters gathered back in church, many adults were scared. They were worried about their children. Martin Luther King spoke out. He reminded them of the importance of the cause that they were fighting for, and that it is okay to suffer for what you believe in. It was easy for people to forget that they weren't alone and that what was happening in Birmingham made a difference to the whole country. The protesters persisted until the white businessmen of Birmingham finally agreed to integrate stores. This decision made many other whites angry. 
Some even planted bombs, one in a black church and the other in a hotel. The violence against blacks became so serious that finally the president stepped in and brought troops in to force the segregation laws to be changed in Birmingham. This began a change in segregation laws that rippled throughout the whole country. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe that we shall overcome someday.